Hey, what's up? I just bought a new book. I was actually searching for a specific book and couldn't find it in Vietnam. So I bought this one. I wanted a new book, but I wasn't really sure what to get. And I also feel that finding a new nonfiction book is challenging. You can go to different stores or you could just spend a lot of time in one store trying to figure out which book you want or you could buy a bunch of books and then never read them. Like you get in a store and you get so excited about picking out a book. You're like this, oh, this, this resonates with me. I'm totally gonna get this. And then you never read it. So why is that happening? And how do you actually get a book that you'll read, that you'll want to read? So I'll go through a little bit of that right now. I'm gonna talk about how I choose books. I also have a couple examples here of books that I have chosen that I have not read right? Like they didn't resonate with me. And I can explain what I did <laughs> to pick them out uh, that didn't resonate with me. I really, really enjoy reading. I love reading nonfiction books. I don't think you have to push yourself through a book. I think a nonfiction book can take you through a journey if you enjoy it and are resonating with it. And if you're not, maybe it's not for you. So I'm, I'm going to walk through some of that. This book I just got, uh, you can be happy no matter what. So it kind of sounds like super self-helpy. I usually don't get books like these. But the way I picked this one out, um, it's not, a, a, not one I recognize. Usually I'm in bookstores all the time and I look at every single book in the bookstore. And in Vietnam, I have a, a limited choice of books. <laughs> if you're in a bookstore in America or an English-speaking country, I mean, you have so many books, it can get exhausting. I actually love looking at bookstores, so the bigger selection they have, the, the more fun I have. I literally just want to spend as much time as possible in there. Uh, but since I have a limited selection, uh, what I need to do is find one that resonates with me. And uh, this one did. And what I did was I picked up you know, a bunch of different books and looked at them. And people say, like, you can read a little bit of it, which I really recommend. If you don't read it, then you're likely to get one that you don't really resonate with so much. I'll show you an example of that actually for me. So Bushido, this is a old book and it's all about Japanese culture and samurai. I love samurai, I love Japanese culture. So I'm like, this is, th like, this is it, I'm totally gonna get this book. And so I got it and I read a little bit of it and you can even see I've underlined some stuff there was so much stuff in here that was fascinating. But this is a really difficult read. Like this is not, this is not that fun to read, but I can read it. But I just like eventually put it down because it's just like not that fun. Me, I kept it because maybe I'll like pick it up and I'll be interested in Japanese culture again at some point, like samurai culture and I'll keep reading it. But this is something I picked up mainly for the name and I didn't really read too much on it. So I haven't really continued to read so much on it. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll explain this one first and I'll go into some other stuff just cause this one's on my mind of how I picked it out today. So I, uh, grabbed this book. There's typically like a preface an introduction. You can read whatever you want. The introduction is supposed to sell you on the book. Like the first stuff can sell you on it. So it's important to also read some other stuff than that too, because sometimes you just read the preface, which I think I didn't hear like just the start of it. Let me see if this one has a preface. Yeah, like a publisher's forward. And you're like, all right, great. Preface to the uh, first edition. So these can sell you on reading the book. I mean, that's the whole point of it, to sell you on it. And maybe that's written in a way that resonates with you, but the rest of the book isn't. So be careful for that. So uh, I don't always read them. I mean, if I really like the Arthur, like for example, Cal Newport, I really like him as an author, so I will read everything that he writes in here, um, even when he's thanking people, because I like him as an author, so I'll read that. Uh, for these, you know, this has an introduction, but I wasn't really sure. The easiest way is pick up the book, read the back, see if that resonates with you. Sometimes this is written by someone else, so it's not the same writing as the author, so be careful for that too. You might read this and be like, oh, that's great. Name's great, this is great, I'm getting it. You don't want to do that because <laughs> You might not like the book. This could be written by someone else. Um, so you'll open it. You can read a little bit. You can read the introduction if you want. It's very important, though, to actually go into the book 
and you can start from the beginning. Usually what I'll do is I'll grab somewhere random in here. So I'll go further into the book. I'll read a little bit of it. And if it seems easy, I'm like, okay, cool. Like I'm enjoying this, it's, it's easy. And then I'm like, all right, let me, let's go to the beginning and just start and see if the beginning resonates with me. Because if, you know, if this resonated with you, the, the title resonated with you, and then that resonated with you, you just want to make sure that you're not starting the book and you're like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not getting it. It's like it just doesn't feel good. Because then <laughs> you're not going to even get to the part that felt good. So um, then I'll start reading. And I'll try to read a little bit. Like, you don't want to just read one paragraph. It's not enough. So you read a little bit, and you get to a point where you're like, okay, like, I'm enjoying all of this. Mm, I'll go a little bit further. I like to read the first, at least one whole page, but maybe, you know, two pages or something. And if you feel all of that felt good, it could be a good buy because you've read a little bit somewhere else. You've, you've read how the author writes. So at least you feel good about the book. The reason I say feel good is because sometimes... You read the cover, you read the back, maybe a preface, introduction or something. But when you get into the writing of the book, it's just like, um, when I say it doesn't feel good, for me, it's like I'm just reading the same thing over and over again or I'm reading it and it's not connecting with me. And when I say connecting, it's, it's not making me feel like I can understand the words in a very clear way. It just seems unclear. It seems like my brain is not capturing what it's saying so I'll read it and reread it and then, or maybe it'll just like, I can't even understand it. So when I say I can't understand it, it's not connecting with my brain patterns. They're saying what they want to say, but my brain's not understanding it the way I want to understand it. So if I pick up a book and when I look at it and start reading it, I understand it the way I want to understand it. Like it just, it just seems clear. Then that's a book I'll, I'll pick up. That, that can be a legitimately good book for me. So you know, this is the start of this book. It just, it just seems pretty small. So I was like, I can give it a shot. I don't know this Arthur. Oh, another thing in here, just to double check, because some new books are not that great. Uh, what you can do is, I always like to do this. Check the very front and see what year it came out. This is 1961 that this book came out. And it was, this, this edition was 2007. When a book is old, that means it's been through the test of time. That means over many, many years, people continue to pick up the book and it continues to sell and bookstores continue to have it. So it likely means it could be a good book. Just because it says doctor on it doesn't mean it, it's that great, but it does give um, you know, some height to it. It's like you know, number one times bestseller. It says these things on it to sell you in the first place, but when you check that year as well and you're like, okay, it's been around for a while, it might be a good book. This can be the same with new books. Just go through the, the other methods that I said on how to check because if it doesn't resonate with you and it's a new book, don't get it. But if it's a new book and it really resonates with you, that's great. And sometimes you'll see stuff on social media or talks about a book and it doesn't resonate with you, it's not the right one for you. So then you can put it down. Uh, for me, and I'm just going to talk about my journey a little bit, my nonfiction journey started with this book. This was a gift and there's actually like a note in the beginning. This was a gift from uh, someone who I w worked under or was an intern under. And she told me she could see me being her boss one day, which was huge. That was like crazy for me to hear. And I, I really appreciate it. I mean, I, I liked it. I admired it. I love leadership. I've always cared about leadership. And so this book really resonated with me. Uh, I read it a long time ago. And that got me on the track of reading leadership books. It also got me on the track of John... C. Maxwell. And the reason I'm bringing that up is if you find an author you like, keep reading books by that author. Like you're, you're going to know that it's a, it resonates with you because you've already read a book by that author. So that makes it easy if you, if you know an author that you like. So I read a lot of Maxwell's books. And now if I go back and try to read it, it just doesn't resonate with me on the same level. It, every book resonates with you at a certain point time or it may not resonate with you at all. So just allow yourself to, to feel the book and if it hits you at, right, like if you're staring at the words and it seems clear, then that's the right time for you if the stuff is making sense. If it's an absolutely incredible book that everyone's talked about and people are like, you need this book, you gotta read this book. But when you try to read it, it just like doesn't seem clear to you. It just might not be the right time. Maybe you like that book. Maybe you could try it again in the future. For me, 
When I was younger, I hated carrots and peas, and I didn't want to eat them. But then I kept trying them over the years, and I like peas. Carrots I eat, but I don't like love them. But like I can eat them now, but peas I really enjoy. So you just keep coming back and keep trying it. So the same thing, you could do that with a book, that if it's very famous or something, or if you really want to read it. But you don't have to push yourself through a book if you're really not enjoying it, unless you're in a book club. And so, uh, for example, Cal Newport. He wrote a book called Deep Work. I really liked that book, Deep Work. So much so that I picked up other, other of his books. And I read Digital Minimalism by him, which I feel like is his best book. And I just like whoosh, rushed that book because it was just so good I didn't want to put it down. Um, because of that, when I was leaving America, I picked up uh, Slow Productivity, like his newest book before I left America because I knew I couldn't find it here. And I'm glad. You know, you can see all these post-its. I'm, I'm trying to like take take notes and books and do stuff like that more. So I, I really enjoyed this book. Um, very easy because it was by the same Arthur. Uh, my friend had a Cal Newport book at his house. And so I was like, oh, can I, take, can I take this? And he said, sure. So, you know, I took this, but then I sent him a copy of, of the newest book. And, uh, you know, I, I started reading this one, but then I picked up this copy. And this one isn't resonating with me. Why? Because, you know, I run a company and I have to do email and stuff and then he's saying that you could do less of it and now I'm at the point where I don't have a tremendous amount of clients, I don't really need to do all that communication, so I'm actually like doing what's in this book. I'm really not spending a lot of time in messaging or, or wasting time in messages. He also mentions it in other books. So I have this, I may pick it, like, may pick it up and continue reading it at some point, but you know, I took it from a, a friend uh, and it, it's the same Arthur, so I could enjoy it, but I'm just, it's not resonating with me at the minute, so I don't have to. Atomic Habits, very, very famous book. Uh, lots of people talk about it. So when so many people talk about it, it's a good reason to say it. It might resonate with me too, right? Like, if you just picked this up and had it in your house, you probably wouldn't go wrong with it, but you could still do the methods to read it, right? Like, because even if a lot of people are talking about a book and you just order it, Maybe you don't know if it resonates with you or not. But I think most people are like just Amazon ordering books anyway without like picking it up and reading a little bit. So, you know, some really, really known ones are going to be okay with that. But if you're going to go into a bookstore, which I like, do the method to pick it up and read a little bit of it. Because I know so many people that get so excited and get a stack of books because they're like, oh my goodness, read the title, read the back. I'm getting it. And then maybe one of them resonates with you, but maybe none of them do. Uh, I got this in the airport. I liked Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So if you like the Arthur, if you like who the book is about, then maybe it'll resonate with you, but you still want to check. So you want to re read a little bit of it, right? If this is by him, like I haven't read a book by him before. I, I don't know if it's going to be good. Maybe, you know, he hired uh, a shadow writer, someone to write it for him. But that's fine, right? As long as it reads good. And so as I read it, it's like, oh, super easy read. Okay. Let's read some more. Let's read some more. Super easy. Okay, sure. I can get this and I can finish this shortly. So I'll, I'll do that. Uh, this book was given to me, Man's Search for Meaning. It's known by many as one of the greatest books like of all time. And uh, my buddy who battled with depression and stuff read this and he said it's like his favorite book of all time. And so that intrigued me because he's a really deep thinker. You know, he has a deeper connection with depression, which I have felt as well. I thought this could give me a better understanding of it. This talks about someone's time during the Holocaust and then some of his psychology methods. And I found it extremely fascinating. The, the first part of the book where he's talking about the Holocaust and being in the concentration camps, absolutely fascinating. And then the rest of it's a little bit more of a push, but you've gotten through so much that you find the rest fascinating. You wouldn't know that just by picking up a little bit of it. Uh, but you would get so involved in just like reading little bits of it that you end up, let's read the whole thing. And, and to comment on that, that, that same principle, <laughs> speaking about principles, this Ray Dalio's book Principles, which is known as a very famous book, and it's very big, so I didn't really want to pick it up for a while. I finally did. And so the beginning of it is his story. I like reading people's stories, so I was like, whoosh, could get through that, and I'm like, Yes, I'm finally going to read a giant book. This is great. And then the later half of the book is all of his principles, which is not that fascinating to me. 
it can be helpful, but I, I just like kept, I kept slowing down while trying to read it because it's not that fascinating to me. So as you can see, there's these tabs here. So I've only read this, this front little part of the book, maybe a third of the book, maybe. I could read more every once in a while, I'll pick it up and, and read a little bit. But it's not something I'm like, oh, I wanna pick up, I wanna keep reading, like, I, I want to. And if that's the case, you're gonna stop reading nonfiction. You have to want to pick it up. So for Cal Newport, for example, I want to pick this up. I go about my day, I do things, eat, sleep, go to the gym, whatever it is, right? Like work, but I'm like, mm, I'm gonna sit down and I lay down on the sofa, right here. I'm gonna just lay down on the sofa a little bit, maybe grab a pillow. <laughs> Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. <laughs> Don't get sick. I'll lay down for a little bit and just read, read until I feel like I'm satisfied and then I'll get back up. It could, it could sometimes only be like three pages. Sometimes it's like 20 if I'm just really feeling good. And then I'll put it down and then I'll go about whatever I'm doing and then I'll keep picking it up. So when a, when a book is resonating with you and you're feeling good about a nonfiction book, you want to keep picking it back up. And I think a great thing about nonfiction is it feels like you're progressing. It gives you that sense of, it gives me a sense of comfort and feeling like I'm progressing, which I think you really are. You're either growing or you're shrinking. Like you don't, you don't really just stay at some stable level. That's, that's my belief. So I love to keep growing, like putting new pieces of knowledge into my brain. Doesn't have to be a ton at one time. It's just like you're, you're continuing to learn from other sources. And if you're choosing stuff that you enjoy or find somebody like Cal Newport's a researcher, like if you find them fascinating and an expert, then yeah, of course you can learn from them. And, and just by sitting there and reading a little bit each day, or not even if it's each day, every once in a while, it feels good. So I think it's important to find a book that resonates with you because then you'll want to keep putting, picking it back up. If I would only get one book, and I, w and I know a lot of people that say, I can't get another book until I finish the one I'm reading. If I would say that with something like this, maybe I would finish this, but it would take a long time to get through. The same thing with this one. You know, I could push myself to get through it, which is great, I could finish this book, but that's also keeping me from reading stuff that I would really enjoy. Because, because I'm gonna push myself through reading something, it might mean I could read two or three books in the same amount of time, and ones that resonate with me and push me and drive me and excite me, in the same amount of time it would take me to read this one, which would just be the feeling of like I'm getting through it. And if you do a few of those books where you feel like you're just getting through it, then you're probably gonna stop reading nonfiction because it's not fun, you're not enjoying it. And I don't mean to like badmouth you know, either of these books or anything. They're just not resonating with me at this moment. Like I said before, I might pick one up and in the future it might really resonate with me or give me some pieces of information that I really wanna read. But there's other books like this, which I, I mean, this resonates with me so much right now, especially as I'm doing more YouTube stuff and trying to be more creative and not feeling burned out. This, that's what this talks about. It just really, really resonated with me on a deep level. And so, you know, I did want to buy a new book and I wanted to make sure I could get something that resonated with me so I feel good about it. And so I was able to pick up this book. I don't feel like it's a giant commitment, right? It's not that big. And if it makes me feel good and I can read through it, it'll keep me flowing and moving along on my personal growth and my nonfiction reading. Hopefully uh, you found some of that helpful. I hope this helps you find a nonfiction book that you are feeling good about, that you want to read, and that helps you flow with your reading so that you can read some more nonfiction. Because nonfiction doesn't have to like, Ugh, like Ugh, stop you up. Somebody pick up a book, Ugh, I don't wanna read it. I got to, cause I gotta keep growing. No, get that book that resonates with you and makes you feel good. And then you'll keep flowing that way. Cause yeah, fiction can be fun to read too, but nonfiction can be really fun to read. And so I really do hope this helps you find that nonfiction book that resonates with you the most, right? If somebody tells you, go pick up that book, you gotta read it, this is the one for you. Make sure you find out if it is the one for you before you force yourself to read that one. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to mention on this video. I really appreciate you watching and thank you so much. A like and subscribe if uh, you found it fun, interesting, helpful. It'll help more people that are in the similar boat to finding a nonfiction book or other kind of content like this find this content. So that would be helpful for me too.
I'll see you next time. Bye.